today, even when I was praying with several people, people would uh, ask me questions like, did I get this because I did? And then they would say this or this. See, um, when you're talking with people, again, we have assumptions of why we have what we have or why we're not getting over what we can't get over. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to break through that and get to what we call the core of the problem. Okay? And, and sometimes by just listening to people, you can find out what the core is. Other times, uh, God will have to tell you this is what they're dealing with. As an example, I've, I've prayed with people, and they'll just basically say, well, 13 years ago, I got in a car accident, and it did this to my body. Well, there's kind of what the issue was. It wasn't that they sinned. They got in a car accident. Okay? Or I was walking through the mall, and someone sneezed on me, and then I've had this problem with a runny nose. You don't need to try to figure out if that was a demon. Someone sneezed on him. Okay, does that make sense? And I know when I say that, you're laughing and you think, we don't do that kind of stuff. And, you know, bless the Lord, we don't most of the time, but a lot of times we do. When we read through the Scripture, what we do is we sometimes can't see the difference that there could be this condition and it could be caused by a demon, and yet we could see the same condition two pages later and it's not caused by a demon. We have to find out what's going on in the situation. Okay? All right. So step two is this. In step two, what we're going to do is we're now going to ask what causes problems in people's lives. Now, this is just a really simplistic way of just asking a basic question. Where do all the problems come from? Now, you're going to go, well, isn't it all sin? Well, theologically, that's the correct answer, isn't it? Adam sinned, and isn't this a wonderful world we live in because of what he chose to do? All right? That's the big theological, theological answer. Yes, Adam did sin. But are you guys ready? Because he sinned doesn't mean that you've sinned, and that's why there's this problem in your life. So you have to now come at it what we call a natural, supernatural perspective. So what causes people to have problems in their life? First one, natural realm. Let's look at that one. They contract diseases. They just have people sneeze on them, or there's Ebola going around, or something like that. People hurt themselves. So there are going to be people that you actually, uh, I didn't think this was possible, but I, I started, when I first started praying for people, people would present problems with me, and then as I would begin to talk with them, I found out that their conditions were because they slashed themselves or they actually inflicted pain on their body. Now, there are people out there that don't like themselves, and they go through a form of repentance by actually afflicting pain on their body. And then they come up to receive prayer, and you have to get to kind of what the problem is or what's going on in that condition, and you find out people hurt themselves. That's natural. Now, it might have something to do with their emotional state or something even spiritual, but they're physically hurting themselves. All right, the next one is, number two, sin. But what we mean by that is they're sinning against themselves, which means they're depressed or they have judgments upon themselves. Now, what that looks like is this, this term or these phrases that people use and Adam and Kelly have both picked up on it, it's these kind of things where people say, well, I did this, so I deserve to have this issue. See, that's proclaiming something upon yourself or agreeing with something or thinking you deserve what you get. And, you know, the good thing about Jesus is he really does forgive sins, and he really wants to show one of the ways that he forgives sins is by healing the soul and restoring the body. The next one is this. Now, this is in the natural realm. You can have what we call uh, family problems going on. These aren't hereditary things, genetics. I'm talking about your social stuff that's going on. People can become, in pain, in pain can come into their life through family. Uh, it could be physical abuse. It could be sexual abuse. It could be emotional and verbal abuse. These things affect people. Now, today what the Lord has done very graciously is he's shown several aspects of how he does healing. We've seen him physically heal. We've seen him address emotional things, and we've seen him address things that go on in the church. He's come and decided he wants to heal among us, and what we have to do is we have to have what we call a holistic view of people. And what I mean by that is God doesn't just come and heal physically and leave the soul untouched, or God doesn't come and just heal the soul and leave the, the spiritual untouched, or God doesn't just heal us spiritually and leave the body and the soul untouched. He it, this, this is called an integrated healing model we're working on. How does God heal the whole person? Okay, And we'll find this out as we do this today. A lot of times God gives a word of knowledge about a... Need.